This is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Good morning. My name is Michael Ryan. I am the uh, Volusia County Communications Director, and this is Volusia County Today. I am joined today by uh, with Heather Belden and uh, on the uh, communications team, and Tracy Mestry and Lisa DeBerry, or excuse me, Lisa Perez with DeBerry Hall. Is that close? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She is I the girl of DeBerry. DeBerry. I, Lisa DeBerry, I like her. I just gave you a new name. We've changed your name. I like it. I tell you what, before we get into DeBerry Hall, because as you guys know, I'm fairly new here and don't know much about us, so I, I'm looking forward to our discussion. But before we get into that, um, we have a couple news items we want to touch base on. Um, Heather, you want to talk about, we had, a, we had a, a, a pretty significant retirement this week. We do. A Volusia County staple. I grew up watching Claire Metz, uh, and I remember the first time meeting her in this role as a PIO with Volusia County was during the hurricanes last year, and I was starstruck. She is a local celebrity. She is someone that we all have watched and trusted, and after 39 years, she is retiring. Um, It's definitely heartbreaking for us here in Volusia County. I know that she delivers the news that we have fairly, honestly, quickly. Um, She will call me and I always know that whatever story that she's running that's from, you know, the business that I'm running is going to be a great one. So um, she will be missed. Yeah, you know, not having not been in Felicia County for very long, I only have one Claire Metz story. I met Claire Metz for the first time on Tuesday, and I handed her my, she was interviewing somebody with us, one of our council members, and I handed her my business card, and she immediately said, thanks, I don't need this, and handed it to somebody else, because, <laughs> because I think she was retiring, like that was her last story, or, or one of her last stories, so, um, I, but I do understand. Um, I also, the, the meeting, um, you probably remember this, as the meeting where I was confirmed as director, Claire, mm-hmm. my wife was there. It was a pretty big moment in our life, and Claire Metz walks through, and my wife literally jumped up and followed her through the, and left me, <laughs> and, and didn't care about me, and followed her through and went and introduced herself and stuff. So I, I certainly have an understanding of how significant she is here. So that that's going to be big for us. We're looking forward to working with our with our new um, reporter that's going to take her place, though. Not we'll, too much, Claire. If you're listening, we we will miss you. <laughs> we will miss you. Um, uh, we also had another big event this week. On Tuesday, we had a county council meeting, and the council approved the budget for um, fiscal year uh, 23 and 24 with a, uh, uh, well, actually the big thing they did, Heather, they eliminated uh, tax, which is a big deal. Um, the communication tax went away with this budget, which is, um, you know, a, a milestone for this commission. And um, we also approved a budget that focuses significantly on services and infrastructure. Could I sound more government, right? Right. Infrastructure. Infrastructure. Um, and tell me a little bit, what's going on uh, the beaches this weekend? So the beaches, as always, I know if you're listening, you've probably heard us say this one million times, but please be safe. Um, The rip currents are gnarly, as David Hunt would always say. Um, Stay in an area that is guarded by a lifeguard. You can find those on the Volusia Beaches app, which is a free app that you can download to your cell phone. Um, And if you are going to go in the water, go in an area where you can always touch the ground and uh, keep an eye out for those who are young or who may not be the most experienced swimmers. Um, rip currents may not seem like something that is is going to be a problem, but they can can get on you quickly and it can it can turn very fast. So be safe out there. Swim in front of those staff lifeguards. That's good advice for the weekend. Um, one last item before we um, kick over to DeBerry Hall, too. We had, um, at the council meeting on Tuesday, we had quite a showing for the what people are calling the fuel farm in Ormond Beach. And we want everybody to know that we are working on a dedicated web page for that that should be up and running on Monday that will have quite a bit of information about um, the location, the zoning. And, uh, you know, we know a, a lot of people are concerned about that and want to stay up to date on the progress. So that's going to be the best way to do that at Volusia.org. Awesome. So. I know that's definitely a hot a hot topic right now. So yeah. So okay, enough boring governmental news. Let's talk um, <laughs> let's talk about what you called what we were off air you called a sleepy historic site. <laughs> it's <laughs> definitely not a sleepy historic site. Uh, DeBerry Hall was uh, built in 1871 by a very wealthy champagne uh, importer by the name of Frederick DeBerry. He chose the beautiful St. John's River to build this hunting estate. Um, it includes uh, seven buildings, uh, which 
has an 8,000 square foot mansion, a fully renovated stable, um, a tenant house, an ice house, a caretaker's house, and a beautiful visitor center. Um, Frederick DeBerry uh, spent his winters there. He <clears throat> also got into the orange growing business like so many other people in the late 1800s and uh, the commercial steamboating business but mainly it was a place for sport hunting and hospitality and entertaining his friends who happened to be some of the wealthiest people of the time uh, the Astors the Vanderbilts the Goulds two presidents um, possibly three and uh, the Prince of Wales, who became King Edward. So we have a beautiful site that you can tour, but we also stay incredibly busy with our education coordinator, uh, Lisa Perez. She keeps us hopping constantly. And I grew up in DeBerry, and I am ashamed to admit that I had never gone there until I started working here with Volusia County. If you are even remotely in the area, I encourage you to go out there. It is such an incredible site. The building is this old building, but it's so beautiful in the craftsmanship that they did use to build it. Um, can you tell us some features of the house? I know like the windows are a big deal. There's a basement. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, like I said, the house is 8,000 square feet. We have um, 64 uh, hand blown uh, glass windows that are original to the house. Um, 54 doors. Uh, the, the site itself is just covered in native trees and plants. Uh, we recently had an employee who left to go to bigger and better things, and the, she said the thing she missed the most was coming to work at such a beautiful place, which I, I thought was pretty pretty incredible thing to say about it. Yeah, the grounds are all, they are, it's very beautiful. You can, you can go walk around, you can do a tour. And like you said, there are so many things that Lisa has planned there. Um, why don't you tell us about some of the, the upcoming events? Cause we're getting into some really fun ones. Oh yes. This is my favorite time of year. We're entering spooky season. And so we are doing some spooky things at DeBerry Hall. Um, one of the big things we do every year is we have creepy candlelight tours. Um, and so those are in in the evening which is special because normally the tours are during the day from 10 to 4 so for two nights in October you get the chance to walk through this 151 year old mansion in the dark we even turn off the emergency lights and we lead you through by lantern so there's lots of things that could be hiding in the corners um, and Tracy and I dress up in Victorian clothing and we guide you through the house and we talk about some things that have happened in the house, but also about like Victorian mourning customs. Um, they were in a lot of interesting things when people died. And so we just talk about a variety of things. It's educational um, and a little spooky, nothing too scary. It's not <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights or anything like that. But A few corny jokes. Yeah, lots of puns. We're big on the, <laughs> the puns for sure. And it's just a unique way to see the house and we do it we're doing it friday october 20th and saturday october 21st and we do one at seven o'clock and one at eight fifteen. okay Lisa, i have to ask then in in the in the in the spirit of the season see what i did there yeah i love it uh, the, the, i having just moved from from thank you for laughing heather thank you <laughs> um having just moved from saint augustine where mm -hmm. they will tell you every house is haunted in saint augustine mm -hmm. what are the stories here there's got to be one. <laughs> to come on the tour well, to find out. <laughs> we haven't we haven't seen a ghost in months. No. However, um, months <laughs> personally, <laughs> it's a very old house. It's a little creaky. Um, several years ago, when we had uh, Hurricane Matthew bearing down on us, uh, the former site director and myself, we were closing up. You have to shut all the shutters. They have the original shutters. It makes it very dark in there. And we were standing with the um, with an antique box piano in front of us and we were probably about 10 feet on each side and as we're talking about you know the hurricane coming do we have everything ready several of the piano keys went off in front of us now maybe it was the mm -hmm. air pressure I'm out. maybe it never was, going back <laughs> maybe it was the incoming storm i i don't know how to explain it so i would just say some unexplained things have happened there and you definitely sent me a picture from the security cameras a couple weeks ago, <laughs> if I remember correctly, of something in the really? window. 
it might have been a face or, you know, a just a shadow. Some wind. Yes, at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> See, that's going to make that night tour so much better now that I know that. <laughs> we would love to have you come and yes. join us. Absolutely. I have um, two teenage girls in the house that I love to terrify every chance I get. So, and they think they're much braver than they really are. So we will definitely. <laughs> what else is going on this season? Okay, so we have a lot of things, like she said, we keep very busy. Um, we have lemonade lectures at DeBerry Hall, and those are typically on Saturdays at 1 p.m., and we serve lemonade and cookies, and it's inside the beautiful barn that we have that has been fully renovated, and we have a variety of speakers. We love to have presenters talk on several different topics because I don't know what is interesting to the community. Um, so we're going to have someone come talk about Lake Apopka, their history. We have someone coming to talk about the trains in Volusia County, the very first train that left out of Port Orange. Um, and we also have someone coming to talk about the native plants in Florida and why it's important to plant native plants in your in your yard and the benefits of them. Um, and speaking of plants, we also have a Master Gardener series. And so once a month on Tuesdays at 1 p.m., we have some Master Gardeners that come in and talk about a variety of topics. And since it is spooky season, in keeping with that, we're going to talk about plants that bloom at night night. So different plants that bloom in the evening once the sun goes down that feed our evening pollinators like bats. So that should be a very interesting program as well. Wow. And so are there fees associated with it? Um, most of our programs are free and open to the public. There are a few things that we charge for. So the lemonade lectures are free. Um, the creepy candlelight we do charge, that's $10. Um, and then we do line dancing at DeBerry Hall. And we Yeehaw. do that on Thursday nights. Oh, yeah, we kick it up in the barn. <laughs> <laughs> she really has a cult following at this point. Oh. She, we, we have to. We have a waiting list for it. Yes, yes. And it's so much fun. And that costs three dollars just to kind of cover us being there in the evening because that's at night as well i think three dollars for line <laughs> dancing is pretty reasonable right yeah, yeah we try to keep it low cost because we want people to come and we you never know what's going to draw somebody to Barry hall and a lot of people like you said have never been there and mm -hmm. so they're like oh, i love dancing and they're like wow look at this beautiful place and take a tour and come back bring friends become volunteers um so again a nice variety of things to bring people in and I love with the lemonade lectures, um, I help you with the calendar every month. Oh, yeah. They're always different. I don't think I've ever seen one repeat. So, you know, you can be a first timer or you can be somebody who's a cult follower. <laughs> and uh, they, there's always something that you guys can learn. And I love how intentional you guys are about keeping true to the season or mm. something that's going on. Um, and I just love how much you guys love what you do in the community that you serve. So. We, we feel very fortunate that we get to serve the residents of Volusia County mm -hmm. and that we can provide things for them at little or no cost mm -hmm. um, entertainment. So we really want them to be able to come and enjoy this county property um, and you know, do what we can to make the, you know, enrich their lives a little bit more. I mean, we have the best job in the whole world. <laughs> They're not even lying, Michael. They're <laughs> honestly like this. You, you don't have the best job in the whole world? I have no, the they, best they, job, they the just, best <laughs> boss, the best. <laughs> where, uh, so I'm curious, where were you guys before DeBerry Hall, each of you? Um, I was a school teacher. I'm surprised. I taught American history uh, for about 15 years, eighth grade American history. So this was. Well, thank you for doing yeah, that. Yeah. It was, I, I, I miss the kids, but I love what I do now. Yep. And I worked in libraries. So I'm from Marion County in Ocala. Um, so I worked for the public library there in the children's department for about five years. And then I came over to this side. And then I worked um, actually at the DeLand Library up in Volusia. Wonderful library, great people there. Um, and then I stumbled upon DeBerry Hall and was like, this just sounds wonderful. Not that the library wasn't, but this is <laughs> Equally, it's fantastic. I totally knew that. You sp when you were running through your list of events, you were doing it like every every librarian I've ever worked with. <laughs> so, yeah. can, can we take a, again for me who I've I've not been in Volusia County for a long time? Can we t take a step back to the history? What year was it built? 1871. Uh, last year we celebrated our 150th anniversary. Oh wow, that's a big one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about the windows, which made me wonder, like, what does it take to maintain something at that <laughs> historical level? It's got to be a lot, right? Wow, yes, it, it, it's a lot and it keeps me very busy. 
Um, it's constant upkeep, you know, with a 150-year-old building and Florida with the water and humidity. Sure. Um, and all of our buildings are white. So it, <laughs> it is. It's, it's, I'm constantly fighting uh, water intrusion, really, is probably the biggest one. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a labor of love. I absolutely love the place. Wow. There are worse places to go to work every day. That's absolutely (laughs) correct. I even said yesterday, Lisa and I went over to the mansion and we opened the door and I said, I still, even though I've been there seven years, that smell when you walk in, just the smell of the house. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And how do you take care of the windows? I'm super curious about um, that. We do it by hand with a very soft, uh, like a microfiber towel and um, alcohol. Okay, wow. And, just, and it's time consuming. What about the grounds themselves? Um, we ha- we're very fortunate. The uh, crew at Gemini Springs, they take care of my grounds. Uh, we have a, a groundskeeper named Jonathan who just keeps everything looking fantastic. Um, um, before I have to ask for something to be done, it's like he's read my mind. Uh, it's constantly trimming trees because if hurricanes come um, or we've got some great wind gusts, uh, we don't want any anything hitting branches hitting the mansion sure. or the windows. So it's 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 constant upkeep. <laughs> Heather just bought a new house or just built a new house. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Built. You may need. Up. You may need to teach her how to take care of her windows. I with some cleaning <laughs> tip. I'm listening. I like it. Alcohol Jonathan, and Q-tips. if you're, if you're uh, in the in the hunt for more jobs, come out and take care of my brain. There you go. Um, so. On the site, there's some older buildings, but there is a newer building or yes. two? Yes, well, we have a visitor center. Okay. And the only two new buildings, uh, which the, the are not, or they're fairly new, early 2000s, is the visitor center and the pavilion. The rest are original. Our visitor center, we are also a trails welcome center, which is also, you know, one of my, uh, you know, loves is the trails. Uh, you can literally walk out our doors and you're on the spring to spring trail. Um, Inside the visitor center, we have an interactive trail map, so you can go on it. You can drill down and you can literally plan your trip. You can um, access over 80 miles of uninterrupted trails from our site. Uh, You can see which trailheads have restrooms, which ones have um, bike facilities. We have a bike repair station right on property and a bike rack. We will even loan you bike locks so you can take the tour. Um, it is, it's, you know, just set in a perfect location. It will tell you if you can take your horse on the trail, your bike, if you can walk. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, it's got a dual purpose there. And take some breaks from the heat. You guys have snacks there for everybody? Oh, yeah. Restrooms? Snacks, cold drinks, beautiful restroom facilities. When you're open, but. Yeah. So it's, well, we do have the pavilion that is open from sunrise to sunset. So, because we have a lot of late trail users that will come and relax and take a breather in our pavilion. I've, I've been on portions of the, the trail, the spring to spring. Is it all paved or is it is it multi-use? Um, it is all paved and it is all multi-use. So, you can literally go from DeBerry Hall to Blue Springs okay. uninterrupted. And then you can go the opposite direction, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you can go all the way to Titusville in one direction and all the way to Edgewater, Edgewater in the other <laughs> direction. I think if you whisper, they can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we both are, are avid trail riders, oh, yeah. so uh, sometimes I definitely look for her help when we're helping guests plan their trips. We also do, she, she doesn't brag enough about herself, we also do historic bike tours where we'll take people on a long bike ride and we'll tell them about the history of the area. Uh, we do historic kayaks uh, where we'll go out in the kayak and we'll tell people it's can you imagine giving a history lecture out in the middle of a, of uh, the St. John's River? Um, we also do what else? Oh, to your story time is do also you have story yeah. time. Yes, mm-hmm. with the little ones. They've mm-hmm. got stuff for kids, athletes, people who like to dance, garden. <laughs> <laughs> something for everyone. For everyone. And we love the trails so much. Like she said, we're avid trail users, and we love taking people out on the trails. So whether you've been on the trails before, but you want to learn history of the stuff that you're passing, 
or you're unsure about the trails and you want a more guided experience so that someone is taking you along and showing you the trails and where they can go. Um, you're with someone. It's, it's something for everyone and those are free and we do, we're starting now that the weather is cooling down. Um, we're going to start doing those once a month and we'll do one from DeBerry Hall to Lake Monroe and back, which is about nine miles. Um, we'll also go up to Lake Beardsford and ride down into Blue Spring and back again. So we'll do different portions of the trail. And then we even go to Green Springs and we'll ride all the way out to Guys Road and back and that's about 18 miles. So a um, couple of varieties of lengths and different locations along the trail. So I'd like to do this a couple times throughout the show, but how, how I work here and I don't know how to get all this information. <laughs> how do I find out all, all the information about all these events? Take it? Oh, sure. We it. have uh, we do have a Facebook a Facebook page. Um, you just look under uh, DeBerry Hall Historic Site, and you can access our Facebook page. Uh, also, if you go to volution.org, type in DeBerry Hall. That has our list of our calendar events, and um, all of the trail information can be found online. There is a trail app that you can download that you will tell you where you are on the trail what trails to use, what facilities are there. Um, and you can also just go to, you know, the Volusia County Trails webpage and it will give you a list of the trails and the trails maps as well. Yeah. Um, I've done a bike ride with them. <laughs> just, uh, You're doing line dancing before, oh, I'm, yeah. before I'm done with this. I'm more of a story time <laughs> kind of gal, but yeah, it's we a brought lot her in of with fun. the hilly one. It's yeah. a lot of fun. And um, have you walked the grounds? Oh my gosh, yes I have. Now that I've I found it, um, you know, we talked about DeBerry Hall when we were kids and I always thought it was just an old haunted mansion. I didn't know it was this like booming entertainment center essentially. <laughs> but um I've been to the stable. I took my kids there for uh, Christmas breakfast with Santa. Oh, how cool. And it was incredible. Um, they got a very nice, uh, slow paced visit with Santa, not like the mall where you're waiting for hours. That's like, what I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah, no, we got to eat breakfast. He sat down and told the kids this like beautiful Christmas story and spent all this one on one time with them. It was, it was really special. Wow. So, uh, events year round and, and specialized for the seasons. That's what I'm hearing. Yes, so um, we do events year-round. We have lemonade lectures every month. Um, bike rides we'll do for about six months. Line dancing, except for in the summertime, we do take a little bit of a break from that. Um, and then Christmas time, we decorate with over 20 trees, and we do, again, evening tours at Christmas time. Um, and then we do breakfast with Santa. Um, in February, no, it'll be March this year, we do a big living history day, which is free and open to the public. And we have different reenactors from various time periods in history. And we have presenters talking about what's under the dress, what they would wear underneath all those old old clothes. and. Um, just we have civil war reenactors a whole civil war encampment really. yes a whole civil war encampment yeah. and our docents dress up our tour guides dress up and reenact as family members to guide you through the house which is a little bit more special than the regular tours um so we just have stuff all year Yes, and we also uh, do rentals. We yes. uh, mm -hmm. we rent out the stable for events, business uh, conferences, weddings, quinceaneros. Uh, yeah. Recently, we had a 60th birthday party that they set it up as a, a 60s bash, mm -hmm. including the Beatles there you can take <laughs> your pictures with. So we also um, we also do rentals on top of everything else. And tea parties. Oh, oh and our yes. tea parties. Our tea parties, we're getting ready to have one this Saturday. It is sold out, but we'll do another one in December. Um, during the holiday, we do tea port public tea parties about once a quarter. Um, but if you have a group of people, 12 to 20 guests, we'll do a private tea party for you. Wow. And so can you rent out any of the other facilities or buildings? Uh, no, just the stable okay. uh, you rent out. But we do have, I, you know what, Michael? We do. We rent out the pavilion. Okay. Uh, pavi it's, and it's nice to have, it, it's there. You have the backdrop of the historic site. So it is a, a nice place if you're having a picnic or, um, you know, some sort of family get together. So when I hear stable, I think, you know, hay on the floor and horses <laughs> and stuff like that. My guess is it's not like that. No, it's it's not like that. It's about 17, a little over 1,700 square feet. Uh, 
uh, there's three restrooms, there's a caterer's kitchen. The floors are actually the original floors. They are so beautiful. They took them out board by board, refinished them, and laid them um, back down. We also have two of DeBerry's original carriages that he would have used to wow. go out hunting or to go to um, Enterprise to pick up his guest. Uh, so no, it's not a, uh, there were horses there. We still have their little horses nameplates in the side of the barn, but no, it's it's been completely renovated. It's beautiful. What were the horses' names? That's a test. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Dolly is one. Oh, you're gonna. We're gonna get in trouble oh, for this oh one no. from our dose. Our Frederick's gonna come on. Like <laughs> shouting at the radio right now. Yeah. Well, well, I tell you what, we'll let you off the hook with Dolly then. Um, <laughs> how, so, how did Volusia County acquire the property? Um, well, let's see. In 1967, it was put on the National Historic Registry, and uh, the state of Florida took it over. Sometime in the 90s, you had a group of citizens who rallied. Um, Jerkson, I believe, was amongst them. His, he was more involved in the 60s. Um, he was a senator. And they you know, rallied to preserve and save this place. So sometime in the 90s, the county agreed to take it over, and they run the site they own the park and the site but the state of florida still owns the mansion and what's inside of the fence okay interesting how long have you been there I've only been there seven years. Okay. Well, seven, that, that's, yeah. not, that's not an only. That's not an only. Lisa? I'm still learning new things. Oh, yeah. Uh, four years. Okay. So, okay. yeah. And um, the other buildings, are they in use at all? Um, the ice house is what I'm curious about. Yeah. For whatever reason. <laughs> um, you know, you have to, to understand that Frederick was very wealthy and he was a champagne importer. So he had, you know, the finest things. So the ice house was actually where they would store cold meats and probably champagne and some dairy things. So it was cork lined with blocks of ice that were brought down from the Northeast. Eventually, there were ice manufacturers like in Sanford and DeLand in the late 1800s. But at first, they literally shipped blocks of ice down uh, from lakes up north. They'd put them in that ice house, and that would keep things cold. We also have the original ice box in the back kitchen where you can see where they would bring the blocks of ice in there, and it's lined with tin, and put them in there to keep things cold inside the house, you know, the... Uh, probably more like the dairy and butter and there's a little cabinet for champagne i think because it has a lock on it is that where you guys keep your stuff too <laughs> you keep it in the ice house or, or is it in the main house it's funny to think about like shipping ice from the, the lakes up north and like t if my if my spricker goes down now i call the police yeah. like, like it's an emergency you know what I mean? like right, right. i can't imagine having to yeah. wait for ice you know yeah well you know you have to understand at that point in time it was the middle of the wilderness um to Barry hall <laughs> If you have a comment about Volusia today, or if there is a topic you would like to hear featured, please contact Volusia County Community Information at 